what's up welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time so today's video is going to be a q a basically we are going to be doing our craziest stripper stories and i have a bunch of questions that you guys sent in so yeah basically we're gonna we're gonna answer those questions today if you guys don't know who this is i'll put her instagram right here she's been in my videos in the past so if you're not caught up on all the videos then why are you even watching this video like go back period and do everything right <laughs> but yeah um i'll put her instagram right here and we're basically just gonna get right into the video okay so did anybody make you a good offer to sell your body which was hard to refuse Okay, so for me, I'm gonna say no because I've had people literally offer me like $5,000 or $10,000, which I feel like if someone offers you that much, they're just probably on something really weird anyways. <laughs> you know, they're just, just way too good to be true. Like how does a customer who doesn't want to spend $500 in the club all of a sudden have well, $5,000? Do, do you think they meet in the club or outside the club? Or does it not really matter? I don't think it matters, yeah. but for me, I've never had an offer that I couldn't refuse. I'd be like, um, I don't do that. Yeah, right. thank you. How about you? Um, I would say like randomly, no. I stay away from, I try to stay away from like communicating with customers outside of the club. Um, I don't know if that is really any potential to that. I basically feel like a boyfriend. I mean. That's a little bit different, I feel like. I don't know. Just like has someone in the club offered you oh. enough money to go home with them? No. Also, I would, I would like, low-key just be scared for my safety too. Like, you don't really know. People yeah, that's and that's why I don't do outside because what makes you, Mr. I don't have $500 in the club, all of a sudden you, you have $5,000 in <laughs> the hotel right. room. Like, but you no can't money. swipe your card, you can't do cash app, you can't do... Bitch, there's an ATM right there. Right, so... Sorry. <laughs> Babe, there's an ATM right there. <laughs> Next question. Has any customer tried to cross your boundaries? Yes. Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. On a daily time. basis, every yeah. night. That's like, I never go to work without every my boundaries being crossed. But it's just the way you like handle it, I guess. Yeah, yeah you just have to set boundaries. Yeah, you just have to be like, no, that's not okay. Like, don't don't let them think like, or in your mind be like, oh, I didn't like that. But I don't know, I feel like girls be, be, on, that, be on that stuff. Anyway, yeah. have you ever done a couple's dance that went wrong? This is a good question, actually. You go first. Um, yes. I typically, it's funny because in the past week I've been dancing mostly with couples. Um, they've approached me, but I typically try to stay away from them because I had this one time where you dance with a couple, you think that the girl's on the same page, she's jealous, she's mad, she's screaming at the guy, it ends up with them leaving, yelling at each other, security's involved. Um, that's happened actually a couple times to me. What about you? Um... I think my weirdest thing with couples is like, they're like maybe too into it. And yeah. you know, they just want me to come home with them. They just want me to like, be their girlfriend, both of them. They're like, let my wife treat you well. And it's like, yeah, the, the females in the couples get really, really comfortable. I've had females like in the couples, like they'll spend money on me, but they'll like try to like rub a dollar bill on my coochie and it's like, no, we're not doing that. I feel like the girls always do be very touchy. Yeah. More touchy than the men. That the our club. Um, I um experienced a couple's dance where a girl was not into it at all, actually. She wasn't saying anything, she wasn't upset, but the guy was like, do this to my wife, do that to my wife. And it's like, bro, well, she clearly does not want this. And it makes me feel like Girls be trying to trying so hard to act like the cool girlfriend. Yeah. Or the cool like, just take her home wife and but... treat her well. <laughs> like I'm good on that. You know, I don't need that. Like, oh, my girlfriend's cool. She likes to come to the strip club. Yeah, the whole time she's just there, like, I wanna go home right yeah. now. Yeah. And it was giving like you wanna see her have fun with me for your own enjoyment. Yeah. And I was not messing with that at all. It was just not cute. Anyway, anything else you want to say? Time that made you emotional and leave early. Um, <laughs> the list is really long. <laughs> you go first, because I'm still thinking. Um, um, I would say, well, there's a, there's a, there's like a couple that I can think of, but I did have this one time. This guy put his hand in my face, literally like on my face, 
to get away from him. And um, I'm not gonna lie, that that really peed me off. Um, other than that, I would say when I had a stalker and he called oh me and gosh. told me that he was, and he left me a voicemail on a on a number that was like a, a no number, telling me that he was he had just left the club and was in the parking lot. I didn't I didn't leave. But I was like, it didn't even want to go out to work. It was just really like an uncomfortable. Wait, what was the question? <laughs> oh, it was like a time. <laughs> oh, where got time someone made you and emotional left and left. Early. Yeah, I wasn't emotional. I was just scared because like you don't know what their intentions are. Like, and stalkers in this industry are so normal, and it's like, you know, it's just something that a lot of girls have to deal with at some point. I don't know. One time I left the club early because it was getting shot up, but. I don't know if I was emotional about that. I mean, I guess I was emotional. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what people don't tell you about dancing. They don't tell you how dangerous it is. They don't tell you how weird people are. But mm -hmm. I definitely left the club where, where it was like, okay, I just don't feel safe here. Or maybe like tonight is a terrible night. I'm going home. But I can't remember like a specific time where I was like crying in the club and like had to leave. You know? Yeah, I don't remember that either. For the most but, part, yeah. you have to have tough skin. Like if someone's like, you're not my type. Okay, well, maybe that guy is, you know, maybe I'm his type. Yeah, but I've definitely left early, like... Safety reasons, you would say? Like safety reasons, yeah. and I wasn't making any money, and I just didn't want to be there, or... So I just got fed up with the night, and I just left. But there are, I mean, I feel like every stripper, too, like, goes through those nights where, like, they are emotional about something, whether it's, it doesn't have anything to do with their job. It's just, like... It's already a lot of mental exhaustion dealing with like these drunk men. It's just every it's a, day, bro. It's a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That that alone makes can make a a bad bitch emotional. They're just like, why am I dealing with this? Um. Okay. Well, the next one just says crazy customer stories. Crazy customer stories. Um. No. What's like the craziest customer story? I don't know. Um, I had a customer that liked to come in and be like physically humiliated and um, the first time that it happened he was like you might not be used to this you might not like this and it was easy for me I feel like it was low-key therapeutic which might be kind of toxic but you get people like that it's like a kink thing I think it's yeah I like yeah. the pimps mm -hmm. I love a good pimp we love we the, do they're the best customers ever they really are but what, whatever sip is watching this, God bless you. I don't know. I don't think I've <laughs> ever had like a crazy customer story that I can just like think of off the top of my head. That I mean, I've had customers try to pull their little thingy out, which you know we don't like the little thingy. Yeah, we don't like the little thingy. Keep it in your pants. We don't like that. Keep it where it needs to be. That's probably the craziest thing that's happened to me. Or like, you know, they'll get a room and then as soon as they get in the room, they're like, okay, here's little Johnny. And it's like, oh, what's going yeah, on here? I've That's happened that. to me at mm -hmm. least two or three times. Same. And then they get pissed off. They're like, why is, what why are you not doing what? Money, yeah. I'm like, um, you know, you can just get out. Like, oh, well, I guess like at our club, I had a guy fight the bouncer because he tried to like literally aggressively grab me and put me on his lap. And he was just like, kiss me, kiss me. Like just trying, you know. That you get you get the aggressive I have ones. The are like kiss me, kiss me. And I'm, I'm like, like no, Ew. baby, you can't do that. I ain't kissing. Look, me. it's a camera. Oh my god. No, I'm oh like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna get fired. But also, like, still, like, why would I kiss you? Like, that yeah, that's really disgusting. That's Girl, gross. You better be my boyfriend if I'm kissing you. Like, come on. What kind of things have made you question about quitting? How did you get past them? Let me flash the video. Slow season makes me question quitting, and. It's not like it just makes me question quitting, but it motivates me to like think of like a better end goal, you know? Yeah. Because I just feel like even this, despite like, I feel like I'm a great dancer, but I feel like slow season is still a real thing out here. And I just feel like I need a career where I'm not gonna be making $27 because it's tax season. You know, right. I need a career that is lucrative all year round. And I feel like personally, not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm one of the baddest bitches. And I still feel like it's slow. She is. So, I still feel like it's slow. Okay, um, I would say... What makes you consider quitting? 
the only time I've ever felt like, like dancing in LA and, and certain parts of Florida have made me question about quitting because like, especially in LA after the, uh, after the pandemic, it's the, um, it's the expectation without the, the money. Yeah. And like, for me, sometimes like, I know that it's just because they're just like, not good guys or just not good people whoever it is that's doing what they're doing they don't respect it in the way that like i deserve to be respected i think so like i go home and i'm just like why am i even like putting myself through this but then you go back and you you find a place like in vegas like you find places that are good for you that work for you and where you're valued and then you realize like this is why i'm doing it so yeah, yeah. like when i was dancing in texas for some reason i just thought that i was just gonna make six the middle of west texas bro like <laughs> what made me think that i don't know but that's just... the thing though like we're like cheerleaders because i grew up as a competitive cheerleader and they would travel all over the country to be where the best the best are right that's how strippers are like you gotta find where you it is fit. that you fit yeah like me i i'm not i don't think that i would do great in atlanta but i would love to i i would i like the idea of working there but i think that like vegas works for me but yeah, i like, think i love vegas yeah I think vegas is Vegas is a good, it's a good place. I think like, yeah. First private party. Oh, okay. Well, this is easy. <laughs> I only did one private party and that was like the reason why I will never do another private party. It was in Sacramento. It was last year um, in like November. So just like recently, November, 2021. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be dancing for a friend. You know, it's cool, it's cool. It's not like a dude or whatever. It's like a friend, you know, it's her birthday. She used to be a dancer, so she shows love, she throws money or whatever. And you know, I was expecting it to be like a little bougie, like classy event. And it wasn't giving bougie, classy girl vibes. It was giving girls that are on the floor twerking in their hands and knees vibes. It was giving local rapper performing mm -hmm. type of vibes. You know, it wasn't giving bougie booking type of vibes, you know? And so. I literally put on my dance outfit and I danced for like two minutes. And then once I just got the vibe of the crowd, like I was just like, yeah, I'm not gonna do this, but I'll vibe though, but I'm not gonna dance, you know? I just feel like I came too far from Texas to be shaking my ass on my hands and knees, you know? I feel like me and you both are the same when it comes to that sort of vibe. Like my first private party was at a mansion in LA. Oh no, sorry, it was at an underground party in LA when COVID hit, but that one was weird. I mean, it definitely wasn't giving like, it just wasn't giving really anything to be honest with you. And all those girls were like, their goal was like to take the guys home. And I was like, I just came here to dance. That's all I wanted to do. But the last private party I did was my own birthday party. Mm -hmm. And like, that was lit. Like, yeah, mean, but that's not like. But that's different. That's, that's not like your own event. Yeah. So that's like way. Better. All the other bookings I've had for private parties have kind of been disappointing. I don't yeah, know. I don't really like private parties, honestly. Yeah, me neither. I, I, yeah, I like working in the club. I like going to the club, going home, going to work, coming home. I get to forget everything that happened. Don't need to have anyone's phone number. Don't need to worry about being kidnapped or drugged or anything like that. You know, I can just go to the club and you know be safe. Private parties, there's no protection. Like, yeah, private parties, you're not protected. Have no protection. You don't really, you know, and you're not paying anyone, you're not tipping anyone to like make sure you get your car okay, or you know, it's just yeah. like, I don't know. For me, it's like a little, little, little sus vibes. Yeah. Um, I remember this girl tried to argue with me. I was like, what I look like arguing with a girl who only worked at private parties. <laughs> yeah. Get hired at a club. It's kind of a smaller tier. I'm not get hired at a club. Yeah. It's a lower tier. But you can make a lot of money during private parties, but I just don't, I just feel like people are always on shenanigans. I've heard so many shenanigans. Like, like about like extras and stuff. Yeah, at private um, parties. And like, I'm not here for, I'm like, no. Like, it starts out as, oh, I'm having a bachelor party. Bring your home girl. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, it's, oh, well, why don't you guys do this? And we'll tick tick you that. And then next thing you know they're trying to do something freaky to you you're in the middle of nowhere <coughs> where are you bitch you don't know like yeah no i don't giving <coughs> i'm good on that vibe you come see me at the club come see me at the club so i'm saying like if the they club. can't come see you at the club even before they book you at a private party like it's For real. definitely probably not even worth going to the private party because like and same when we were talking about guys that want to take you home like first of all don't ever do that 
But if they're not paying money at the club, but offering to what take makes you home you think and pay that you, they have like, money at home. are you talking? Like, no, it's giving just weird vibes. Favorite story to tell? The story you'd tell a naive beginner. Um, I don't know. I think. Um, <clears throat> I know there be that. there definitely be shit that baby strippers do that I wouldn't do nothing. Um. Well, I guess definitely the whole like don't go home with people thing is huge because I no, but it's story though. I think that the story that I would tell a naive beginner is the one time that I tried to dance with a millionaire and his card declined three times. He lost his phone, didn't have any way to pay me, and he gave me every last dollar in his pocket. It was a really interesting, really interesting time. It was like a Tuesday night. It was slow as heck in the club. And there was this white dude and he was like, y'all, I'm gonna dance with you. Like, I love black girls. I'm gonna dance with you, da 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 da. So I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it's a thousand dollars. It's a thousand dollars for an hour. Swipe your card, let's see what's up. Like, let's see what's up. So we go upstairs and he swipes his card. It declines. He swipes his card again. It declines. He swipes his card again. It declines. And he's like, yeah, like, I don't know why it keeps declining. Like, they probably think it's fraud, but we have, I know I have at least $3 million in that account, so it shouldn't be a problem. Yes, bro. It's like, I have at least $3 million in that account, so it, it shouldn't be a, be a problem. Maybe it like, it shouldn't be a problem. He, he said it like that. But like, he said, I have $3 million in the offshore account. Oh my God. And it was the same dude, bro. But like, I was like, okay, well, um, you know, just ask your brother to pay for it. Like, just ask your brother to pay for it. You know, obviously you're, you're a millionaire, your brother's a millionaire. Okay, like, cool, pay for the dance. So he was like, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. And he's like, doesn't have his phone to like call the bank and tell them that it's not fraud. He doesn't have his phone to like cash at me or like sell me or anything like that. So, I can't remember what happened. Um. Yeah, we, he, he obviously didn't end up getting the hour, so I was like, fine, we can just do like 30 minutes or whatever. And I was like, open your wallet. And he opened his wallet and I was like, give me the money. And he gave me every last dollar in his wallet, bro. And I remember when I was dancing, which wasn't even that much. It was like $300, $350 or something um, like that, which on a slow night, you know, I was grateful for it. And for 30, like... From, from $1,000 to $300 the jump was kind of a little bit of a pay cut yeah a little, a little bit of a pay cut a little bit, a little of, a bit of, of a pay cut so it took that out but he was on his hands and knees while i was dancing for him because he wanted to smell my yeah so yeah. in that moment you know i really just felt like a powerful confident b because i got this man giving me every last dollar in his wallet on his hands and knees but you know what? I think it's pretty accurate because guys will swear that they have money, bro. They will swear on everything that they have money. And it's just some reason it'll why it'll decline. Yep. Where's it at when I need it, though? I don't want to hear about it. I want to see it. For real. I, I'm going to, like, kind of go off what she just said, the powerful thing, because I, I mean, like, I, would, I don't know if this is like my favorite story, but it's the one that's definitely in my mind when I read that mess, when I read this question. And I had this customer that would come see me all the time. And he was this like very, very submissive Indian guy. I swear he probably was beat by his mom growing up, which, so I would say like, this is gonna be like the moral of the story at the end, which I'm gonna get to, but like he wanted to get slapped like hard for 30 minutes every time we were in dance. He didn't even want me to dance for him. He just wanted me to dominate him and tell him he was like not worth anything and just slap him. And like, honestly, like, you know, some of us have trauma and built up anger and you just like, you're like, yeah, this is a great time for me to just get this anger out. And I would slap the heck out of him. I am serious. And um, so anyway, like a good thing for like beginner shippers to understand is like, you have to be faced with like kinks that people have. And I'm not saying like inappropriate ones where it involves like, you know, anything that's beyond what you're there to do. But like the slapping thing and the humiliation thing, like a lot of strippers don't realize that like, 
people come in there and they want like sometimes they're looking for like a dominant girl because they want to be dominated or they're looking for like this or that so i would say to know that like it's not always just about dancing like knowing who you're dealing with yeah in is, gentlemen's clubs it's mm -hmm. a lot about knowing who you're dealing with yeah the lives entertain them talking to them if yeah. they want to talk i mean i've had customers get an hour with me and they start crying and i'm just there to like comfort them like, you're like a therapist time, at literally. that point it's like i should have a therapist license like you know so that's definitely something that but yeah i would say that pursue. applies mostly to gentlemen's clubs because in urban clubs you're never really gonna have to deal with anything like that that much i mean i've had like foot that's fetish true. guys at urban clubs oh yeah <laughs> but, but things a thing yeah, yeah that's the thing but what i would tell a beginner in this industry is not everything Yeah, I feel that's something that no one told me. Like, I didn't, I'm not, I'm cool with like the fetish thing. Like, I get it. Like, I have my own stuff too. But there's some people that are like, why does this guy want to worship my feet? It's like, you take the money and do it. Like, you're going to have to do it. You know what I mean? Or you're going to miss out on money sometimes. And I'm not saying like, do anything beyond yeah, your limits. Yeah, cross your boundaries. Yeah, don't do that. all caution out the window. Yeah, don't do that. But, but feed into your customers, know what they want, and don't make mm -hmm. them feel bad for it. Because like, they're not gonna spend money. You are, you are like providing a service to people, you know, in a way it's like you're, you know, so you gotta be open to that kind of thing. Just have an open mind, I guess is a good way. Yeah. Okay, so, oh, we already said that. What? What is the craziest gift? Oh, how was your first night? Worst customer experience? Oh, this one's a good one. Worst coworker. Oh, that's a lot of questions that she asked in one thing. How about we just go with the how was your first night? We can answer each one of them. Okay. So how was your first night? I made $150. I was working at a raggedy club in the middle of Dallas that had all the peas and the mm. the the illegal stuff and the hood dudes and it was a crazy, it was a crazy time. I'm pretty sure like my first night back at that club after the pandemic ended up getting shot up my first freaking night back. Are you serious? Yeah, I only made like $150 my first night and I'm pretty sure my tip out was like $100. So, but I was pretty happy because that was like two days work and I just made that in one night, even though I paid out half of it, but I saw other girls making money. So I felt like, you know, if they're making money, whatever they're doing, I can figure it out. And so I stuck to the plan. Yeah. Um, How was your first night? My first night, I made like $750. And I met my first SD that I ever had for like a year and a half that same exact night. And he was pretty much the one that made my night. Um, he had dealt with a Russian girl before me who was like just doing like the most. And um, yeah, so my, my first night was good. That was back before the pandemic. So um, things at that club were different. Yeah. Other than that, I can't really say like anything crazy happened my first night. Um, it was pretty normal. Nothing got shut up. I did not have <laughs> access to any good clubs at all. So I was just working at whatever clubs I could find. Honey, oh yeah, I was in LA. So different, yeah. different state. That's probably, that's definitely the difference. Um, and then worst customer experience. Oh my god, I had a customer spit on me while I was giving him a dance. I was horrified, I was oh humiliated, I was disgusted. I am still disgusted every time I think about it. I was, you know, giving him a dance in the private booth. It was only like a semi private dance, it wasn't like a full private dance. And um, I like turned around, I was dancing, and he spit on me, bro. Like oh he no. thought it was like cute or something. And he spit on me, and I felt disgusted. Disgusted, bro. Like I don't even know what I should have done. I probably should have disinfected my whole life. If we were outside the club, I would have backhanded him. But no, for real, I did not want to fight. But you don't. I did not want to get fight. fired either. You know. No, it was honestly Messed the up. most disgusting thing that I've ever experienced. I hate that for you. How about you? Um, well, I did mention the like hand in my face thing. It was just like the way that it was done was very like disrespectful and very like like objective and like it just a really messed up way like i don't like like first of all if you're gonna put your hand in my face like okay so cool respect, right here bro. but like right here like it was just that was like i was i was mad that was bad um 
other than that, like, I've had a couple really bad experiences. I guess, like, we talked about it earlier. We touched base on it, like, with someone pulling out their, their stuff, like, right when the dance started and then yelling at me because I wasn't doing... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, that's and not... And they try to tell management, either. like, oh, my God. Yeah, like, management's not like, okay, great, like, so you can, you, you can leave. Like, <laughs> <laughs> management's like, yeah, you're, you're kicked no, out. Bro. Like, no one cares, bro. Um, yeah. We're, <laughs> worst coworker. Worst coworker? Um... I don't know if I like really dislike anyone. I've never got into a fight at the club. I've mm. never, you know, I've definitely had people I don't like. I've definitely had people who I've avoided. I've definitely had people who, I, if I see them in the club, I'll act like I didn't see them because I don't want to address at that. you. <laughs> She's really good at I that. I am. I'm a very mean in the club. Venus, I didn't talk to her for like three months. And we like met through a mutual, like a very, very and good I mutual friend. Yeah. Months, she would so. do the whole like, and I was like, okay, I can't tell if we're vibing or why, but gotta go. Yeah, it was it was never like a, a stink eye or a stink face, but it was like the little like you cute, we vibing, but like I'm gonna go this way. Gotta like, go make okay. some money. I'm like, okay, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I don't really think really just like anyone either. I don't know. Okay, I I'm just, just gonna say I've dealt with a coworker who got into it with every single person who was at the club and she knows who I'm talking about, got into it with every single person who works at the club, but swears they are not the problem. She got beef with the wall, like she said. She she was, she, she literally was to the wall. got beef with the wall, bro. She <laughs> literally seen me in person was like, why you didn't say hi to me? And then I was like, did you block me on Instagram? And then she was like, oh yeah, I blocked all you girls from this club. I don't even know, y'all know it. She was trying to be cool with me. And then randomly I see her, she's not like posting or nothing. And no, she just blocked me. And blocked every other girl who worked at that club. But, but swear like, she don't have no beef with anyone. Sis, how did you have beef with the whole club? I was like, baby, you 40. She got beef with the bartenders and the waitresses. For how you got beef with the waitresses? How you got beef with the model girls? How you can be problematic and blame on everyone else? You know she got beef with the house mom. How you got beef with the house mom? And she's sweet. She <laughs> oh my gosh, the house mom is sweet. She be chefing it up, you guys. Like, I swear, like. And, you know, she eats. would just be like, oh, yeah, these girls are hating on me. Ain't nobody hating on you. Who's hating you? Yeah, You're 45. What? Go oh home. God. She is. <laughs> Go start a family. Go do something else. Like, literally something. anything else. Anything else. else. Like, literally you're, anything you're salty else. salty at the 21 year old. But like your time's trying to be day, besties, but, like, but also salty at the same time. It's weird. She's like, yeah, I just, yeah, I don't know. So I, I was gonna bring that up. Everybody, I'm happy you like did. literally, bro, <laughs> literally, bro. Like that's she's the a only person menace, say. bro. Well, not only that, actually, I will touch base on it too because like I had a girl that I was like low key close with in the club for a second just because we were working together and stuff, and girl was lying to me about like everything. Telling me I don't eat meat, but in front of my friend's face, like, oh yeah, like, or she would eat steak in front of me, like, just dumb stuff, like, pathological liar. So, like, also another word of advice to baby strippers: watch out who you be, who you be. Yeah, just to baby strippers: watch out who you befriend at the club. And don't trust these 304s. Don't trust them. Don't. Don't trust them. They might be nice and stuff, but like, yeah, at the end of the day, everyone's got their skeleton. You know, girls are like, oh, all the dancers are so nice. Oh, all the girls are so sweet. Girl boss vibes. No, it's not girl boss vibes. It might be mind your second. Mind your business. Yeah. Mind your business. Especially out here in Vegas. For real. Okay, so the next one. What is the craziest gift you've ever gotten from a customer? Um, a customer asked me to marry him. Yeah, actually, a customer asked me that too. He said, will you be my African queen? <laughs> and he cash out to me sixty dollars for it. And he just said he loves me so much he wants me to bring, come home back to the Congo with him, you know, and his mother would just love me. That's fucking funny. So yeah, that's the craziest. I mean, I don't have customers ever give me like good stuff. Yeah, I mean like I, I don't think I've ever really gotten anything crazy from a customer. There's this one guy in my old club that would bring chocolates and stuff to me and like roses, but that's like just sweet i don't know yeah. like and he was harmless he would barely even like have the guts to dance with anyone he just was like he would like pick a girl like for a week and he would like give her attention and give her like flowers and stuff and like i was one of those girls for a week but like other than that i've never gotten like yeah like people say that they crazy. brought watches or yeah i've never gotten anything crazy like that i mean if you if Perfume. we're talking about like a customer like the first customer i told you about my first night that ended up being my sd he bought me my first designer purse 
but I don't. Was think that it. in the club? Like he came with? No, the club no, 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 no. So that doesn't. That doesn't yeah, count. I don't think it counts. So yeah. yeah, I don't think you really have a good answer for this one. Yeah, especially like when you travel and dance, like you don't. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, so what was the most disgusting thing a customer ever did to you? Yeah, spit on me. Ugh. Definitely spit on me. I mean, I've had customers try to put their fingers in my holes. Yeah, that's <laughs> like that's just or so spit on their finger and try to. Yeah, it's just nasty. Yeah, it's like just just shoot me. I had a customer actually like I mean I don't want to say this was his fault. It wasn't like he was like pulling out his pants or anything, but I was dancing on him and I felt something wet on my leg and his pants. I mean his pants were on and everything. You know, it was just a lap dance and he went all the way to the end. That was nasty. Yeah. And he was embarrassed about happened. it, but I felt bad. Charge them extra, bro. Yeah, he did tip me fat, but it was just kind of like, it was, it was kind of Cause nasty. you having way too much fun. It was kind of disgusting, I'm not gonna lie. Freaking nasty. Yeah, and he was older too. He was a lot older, and I was just like, oh my God. I will never forget when that customer was spray on me and I did not put my hands on him. I don't know what came over me. It must've been the Holy Spirit. Jesus was like, or Buddha was like, like don't lose your job. Yeah, yeah don't lose your seriously, job. bro. I would have. Yeah, because like you know, it's like working even at Jamba Juice or something. Like a customer says something. Bro, wrong. imagine you if a customer can't. spit at you at Jamba Juice, bro. And you I'm can't throwing hit them. hands. And you can't, but yeah, but like you know, technically you can't, and it's like. Oh, uh, uh, I'm so throwing like, hands. Jamba oh, Juice I, gonna have to find a replacement. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna work at Smoothie King. <laughs> Smoothie King's better anyway. I like Smoothie King. Well, it depends on what you order, actually. Anyway, not the point. Um, wildest champagne experience. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of like very similar to like all the other stuff. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever had like, okay, well, I think I had a crazy couple champagne room and they tried, they were convinced like I was gonna go eat breakfast with them after and like hang out with them for the rest of their trip, basically. I mean, if they're gonna pay you by you telling them that, then I'll buy all means. They were being like super, super like aggressive in the champagne room. Bro, like, have you ever had a couple try to like both of them? Damn, like, mm, I'm like, oh no, we I can't do know. that. Oh no, look, it's a camera right there, y'all. We oh can't do yeah, that. I mean, at our, at our club, yeah. Yeah, that's the one where the girl was more interested. Like, the guy was more interested than the girl. He literally was like, I felt bad for the girl because he was like telling her what to do and shit. Like, it's like, oh yeah, like touch her leg, right? Oh no, this like, one, the girl was into it, and if anything, her dude was like cheering her on. And she was like trying to like dominate me. And I was so scared, bro. I was like, get me out of here. She's like, I'm gonna put you in a chokehold. I can't fight both quick. of them, bro. <laughs> can't fight both of them. Yeah, no, couples, couples literally are like, I feel like it's like really awesome or really bad. Yeah, really, And there's really, literally no in between. Yeah. And I've, it's always been like that for me personally. I don't know if it's, yeah. Hey girl, <laughs> has anyone ever been rude to you? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, do we people, need to elaborate? I don't think so. Like, people have been rude to me at normal jobs. I mean, yeah, people I are rude in general. People are literally just upset with themselves and they want to put it on everyone else. That's the end of that, basically. Really yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna yeah. get heated. Worst yeah. experience, where did it happen? Did the club help you? Um, The time a customer pulled their thingy out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they helped me. They were back there within like two seconds, which was very impressive, honestly, because I didn't think they were gonna come. Then I had another customer do it, and he was very aggressive to me, and he was scared, and they didn't come. So it's kind of like, I don't know, like some of the hosts care, and some of the hosts don't really pay that much attention to this, you know, when it comes to yeah. It's kind of sad because I feel like at some clubs, and I will not speak on terms for every club, but some, if you don't treat them a certain way when it comes to tipping out, they, yeah, they, they really don't care about you. And it's not like that about, at every club, because. I work at great clubs now that aren't like that, but it's it's definitely a thing. Like, and it's really messed up. But because it's like, regardless if you're getting tipped out or not, that you're hired to do that job. Yeah. Like, your only job is to make sure that we're safe. It's yeah. really not that difficult. Just give a give a crap. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, I would say like with the dangling thing for me, it was the same the same thing. They pretty much kicked. I mean. I'm like the kind of person where like as soon as I don't like something, I'm like this security. Is over. I'm like security. Like so yeah, like it was over in five seconds. And I still got the money for it. So for the most part they do help you. They're not gonna like let you Yeah. <laughs> this 
<laughs> most annoying to call a customer. Pretty much touch, touch base on that. Too. Yeah. She oh, like, customer? Kinda, like, rub dollar bills like this. Yeah. Oh, I mean, bro, put that dollar away. Sometimes the most annoying girl customers are the other ones who are strippers. They're annoying because like I had to they're deal with so one. They're comfortable. They're comfortable and then they're like dancing on the floor and taking attention away from the dancers. It's like, if you wanted to work so badly, you have a job or, you audition. or audition. Like, yeah, right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And it's like, they're still throwing money. So they're being like, I guess, respectful in a way, but it's like, bro, They're like, just living their dancer fantasy. What I'm saying. Us. That's why I don't go to strip clubs. You as don't a go customer. to the club to dance yeah. as a customer. It's disrespectful to dance. It, in the club it really is. Like you don't customer. stand up and dance while a girl's on stage. Like you just don't do that. Like if you want to do that, go to a nightclub. Yeah. That's all I have to say. Like you want to do a little one two step. That's yeah. cute. But if well, you're over the there club, like trying to shake your ass, yeah. sorry, you're, you're over there trying to shake your booty. Mm mm. It's rude. Very rude. So like that, I and I, I, I'm surprised that I actually just thought about the fact that it was a, it was another stripper that was the most annoying customer I've ever dealt with. Yeah. But, we hope you guys enjoyed this video, telling our crazy stories. Hopefully, I mean nothing is too crazy that we said. Literally, I don't think we said anything too crazy. But pretty like. Yeah, I let that. you guys ask the questions, and those were the questions that you guys chose to ask. So. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Um, follow me on Instagram. Follow Venus on Instagram. I will see you guys in my next video. I love you guys. Bye, you guys. I'll take a thumbnail with me. Oh, yeah? Okay, now do like a shot. Perfect. Okay. I said, bye you guys. Bye. <laughs> that was so fun. I love that.